Hi everyone. So today is going to be another frugal meal and I'm going to be making homemade pizza using up some odds and ends that I need to use in the refrigerator and I will show you the cheapest way that I have found to make homemade pizza. Okay, so my first tip is I'm going to mix this up early in the morning so that I don't have to use as much yeast. If you are using those packets of yeast, you're going to put in one. If you're using you loose yeast, you're going to put in two and a half teaspoons. We're going to make two crusts. If you're not making two pizzas, just pop one into the freezer until the next time. But this will be the best way for you to make it cheap is to make two so that you're using just the one packet of yeast. Okay. And this is sugar. We're going to put in two teaspoons of sugar. And then we have some salt. We're going to put in two teaspoons of salt. Then about four tablespoons of oil. Okay, and two cups of lukewarm water, just warm to your wrist. Stir that together. Now we're going to add starting four cups of flour just to start with. We'll add a little more as we go. Okay, let's get about a half a cup more on there and start kneading it. And I like to knead it right in a bowl. This is why I picked a bigger bowl. For this little amount of dough, you can do it right in the bowl and save yourself a whole big mess on the table. And there's no need to get out a machine to do your mixing for this unless you'd like to. Some of us don't have those big KitchenAid mixers and things. And I want to knead this until it's very smooth and not too sticky. Okay, for me, it's just going to use the four and a half cups today. Okay, now I'm going to put a towel that has been 
wet with warm water and wrung out over the top. And I'm going to let that set until we're ready to make our big meal today. And we are back. You can see this has really raised up a lot. That was plenty of yeast. There's no sense of using all of that yeast if you can just plan ahead even by a few hours. Okay, got that all poked down. And I am going to be, in order to stretch this, making one pan pizza and one pan breadsticks. That way I don't need as much cheese and I don't need as many toppings. And it will still keep everybody full. So I'm going to start by greasing both of my cookie sheets. You can't see both of them right now, but I have two of them here. I'm going to grease them both at the same time. I have got my oven set to 425 degrees. Now you guys have seen my cheese breadsticks copycat recipe. If you haven't, I'll link it in this video. And that is like the best breadsticks if you're not um, trying to cut back. But the one I'll do today is for when you're trying to cut back on cost. I've just divided my dough right into half. Okay, now for the pizza one. I have got some leftover spaghetti sauce from the refrigerator, and this is a can of the Hunt's sauce. And I always use that for pizza because you get way more than pizza sauce for a lot less cost. And I added just a tiny bit of sugar to it because that brand has a tendency to be a little bit sour. Okay, let's get some sauce on here. Okay, now I'm going to add some Parmesan cheese to it, and that will give it a cheesy taste without having to use a whole bunch of shredded cheese. Now, I don't always do this. This is one of my frugal tips for when I'm trying to stretch. Okay, just a sprinkle of that will make a big difference. Now I've got just a little bit in the bottom of this Mexican cheese and I'm going to go ahead and put that on. It's probably about a cup of cheese. I've just really stretched it. Okay. Now, I have a little bit of leftover pineapple from a can of pineapple that was in my refrigerator. And we're going to go ahead and add that to half of the pizza because my son doesn't really like pineapple on pizza. That my husband and I do.
and I still have a few little bits and the juice here and I'm going to save that and put that back into the refrigerator because we'll be using that for another recipe this week. Now I have the package of ham from Misfits Market and I'm going to take two ounces of that ham and dice it up. Desserts on top of the pizza. This is just ham sandwich meat. And then I don't need so much for this side because we've got the pineapple. We just need little bits of it here and there on our side. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and just add a little bit of pepper to the whole thing. And we will get that popped into the oven. Okay, now we're going to do the frugal cheese breadstick. I've got some of this challenge butter, and I'm going to take a butter knife and just lightly butter the top of this pizza dough. Okay, to that we are going to sprinkle some garlic powder. over the top, a decent amount. And then we're going to put just a touch of salt over the top. And now we'll pepper it. And then we are going to put a little bit of the Parmesan cheese, just a little bit, nothing too crazy. And we'll put a little bit of Italian seasoning or oregano, whatever you have. Okay, and we're going to pop that into the oven. All right, now we have all of this sauce left over that I'm gonna put in this little kettle to heat up to go with the breadsticks. And just to give you an idea, that one can of sauce I opened up last week and I used it for making mini pizzas for my son's lunch. And then now we've used it for a pizza, plus we've got enough for sauce for breadsticks. Last time I bought that sauce, it was a dollar a can. Um, I'm not sure what the current cost is because prices are rising all the time, but it still is your best buy. And sometimes you can even get a store brand in the can the same size as a Hunt's for a little bit cheaper and that's good as well and both of those need just a little bit of sugar all right we will be back when this is baked now you guys know i like to keep my stove 
wipe down as I go. That way I don't have a bunch of stuff all stuck to my stove. Just wiping it down with a wet dishcloth. Okay, we'll be back. Okay guys, this is real life. The power went out. I'm leaving the oven door closed. I'm hoping there's enough heat in there to finish cooking the pizzas. In the meantime, we're going to get out the camp stove and finish warming up the sauce on that. And I'll go through the process of that with you. First things first, I'm using one of my lunchtime wipes, and I'm just going to wipe the outside down because it's a little bit dusty. It's been sitting. Next thing we do is we fold these out, and there's little holes on the side that we slide those in. Okay, then we have the little propane tank here. And we have the thing that it hooks to. And over here on the side, we screw that right on. So somehow in the middle of all of that, I lost some footage, but all I did next was screw that propane tank on and light a lighter against the burner and turn the burner on, and then I heated my sauce up. Okay, nothing to fear. Left the oven door closed, and it was hot enough. It finished baking, so we're going to go ahead and cut this up. I like to cut my pizza with scissors. Set this right up here and slide this one over. And on this one, I'm going to cut it into strips. You want it in long strips or short strips, Jacob? Okay, guys, one thing I want to mention. Before we end this is if you're using an electric stove and the power goes out make sure you turn the knob off for the burner so that the power doesn't come back on in the night or something and you're sitting there with a burner on that could be very dangerous all right thanks for watching like and subscribe bye okay I might as well mention that with the powers out we don't have water except for what we store in jugs and this is fresh because we just had a power outage a week ago or two weeks ago and I had to refill jugs.